my name is Mitsuaki Uchimoto. I'm a back-end developer here at LISC. And today, I'll be introducing the LISC SDK. So first, I'll explain what exactly is the LISC SDK. Next up, I'll explain on-chain architecture. Then I'll talk about off-chain architecture. Then I'll talk about LISC modules versus smart contracts. <clears throat> OK. So what exactly is the LISC SDK? The LISC SDK is a comprised set of libraries that are used to develop your own custom blockchain application. So as you can see in the diagram on the top, we have LISC Commander, which is the entry point and interface for developers to interact with the blockchain. Next up, we have the LISC Framework, which is the blockchain framework used to create blockchain applications. And finally, we have LISC Elements, which are separately installable libraries which handle specific blockchain logic. For example, we have LISC Cryptography and LISC P2P. So I mentioned these terms on-chain logic and off-chain logic. So what does it exactly mean? On-chain logic is any logic which lives on the blockchain. For example, token transfers and block validations. On-chain logic introduces state changes only through blocks and transactions. And on-chain logic is always handled in what I mentioned earlier, LISC modules. And on the right side, we have off-chain logic. So off-chain logic is any other logic that is not part of the blockchain state. For example, we have indexing and searching and automated transaction creation, among other functions. Off-chain logic is always optional to execute and these are always handled in what we call plugins. So now I'll talk a little bit more about on-chain architecture. So as I mentioned, modules are the core of on-chain architecture, and they're responsible for all the on-chain state mutation logic. Any specific on-chain logic is divided into separate units. For example, any token transfer logic is in the token module. And modules are easily plug and play, and you can plug them into your blockchain application. Looking at the code example below, it's very simple. First, you require your application genesis block and configuration from the LISC SDK. And then you can require your own custom module called my module. And then you simply initialize your application and finally register your module. OK, so the LISC SDK comes with a set of default modules. First, we have the token module, which I explained earlier, which defines the token transfer logic. For example, if Bob wants to send 10 LISC to Alice, all that logic will flow through this module. Next up, we have the sequence module, which defines all sequences of transactions to ensure that transactions are processed in the correct order. And then we have the keys module, which defines all signature-related logic. So the validation and verification of signatures happens in this module. And then finally, we have the DPoS module, which defines the delegate selection algorithm. So developers can use any of these modules to their liking, and they can even customize and extend them in their own custom application. Next up, I'll talk a little bit about module hooks. What are module hooks? Well, every module has four lifecycle hooks. These hooks apply logic to the state through transactions. And the logic is applied in the following stages. On the very top, you have before block apply. Then you have before transaction apply, after transaction apply, and after block apply. The block stages obviously occur for every block and the middle two transaction stages happen per transaction. OK, so how do you communicate with your module? Well, this happens through actions and events. Actions and events, uh, actions can be used to get any on-chain data, for example, account balances or the current list of delegates. And with events, you can receive updates from the chain, for example, a delegate change event. And both of these can be used in external applications, so that's also very useful. And now I'll talk about some module use cases. So 
the main two functionalities are you can define block level logic. For example, you can automatically execute a specific action every X number of rounds. And you can also define transaction level object, uh, logic. For example, you can execute custom logic if a specific type of transaction is received. And you can also develop entirely new features, such as new consensus algorithms, for example, a proof of authority or a proof of stake module. You can create your own NFT module, or you can create your own smart contract module. OK, so next up is off-chain architecture. As I mentioned, plugins are the main way to implement off-chain logic. Plugins are always optional, and they can also be executed on child processes for better performance. These are also accessible from external systems through actions and events. And similar to the code sample I showed you before, first you require your application, your genesis block, your configuration. Then you require your own custom plugin. And finally, you just register your plugin, and that's it. OK, so the LISC SDK also comes with a set of default plugins. The first one is the HTTP API plugin, which exposes REST endpoints to query a node for blockchain data. Secondly, we have Forger, which provides useful information for monitoring and block forging activities. Third, we have Report Misbehavior plugin, which can be used to monitor and report mis uh, delegate misbehavior automatically. And the last two are new plugins, which we recently developed to enhance the developer experience. The first is the Dashboard plugin, which can be used to monitor network statistics. And the second one is a Faucet plugin, and it's a really convenient way to allocate tokens to various accounts. And this can be very useful when you're testing your blockchain. OK. So lastly, I'll discuss a little bit about LISC modules versus smart contracts, and maybe in chains like Ethereum. So on the left side, you have modules. On the right, you have smart contracts. So any logic, which is, oh, sorry, for any for modules, logic is not on the blockchain state, but on each client. For smart contracts, the logic is compiled and stored on the blockchain state itself. For modules, modules are actually more secure since no outside logic is introduced. So in other words, once you write your modules and you deploy your blockchain, no new logic can be introduced. Uh, whereas with smart contracts, any developer can write their own smart contract and deploy it onto the chain. Therefore, some built-in safeguards are required, which limit flexibility. With modules, you do not require a virtual machine. With smart contracts, they often do require a virtual machine for performance reasons. And finally, when talking about scalability, each application runs on its own blockchain with our LISC modules. With smart contracts, every smart contract shares resources with other smart contracts. So at times, this can cause a performance issue. 